Hey, what's up, everybody? It's about 12.34 on this Tuesday, October 25th, 2011. And as you can see up there, I want to read, I want to talk about once again, in, in case some of you don't know, I want to talk about once again the whole question of what is a reboot. Now, some people do know what a reboot is, and some people don't know what a reboot is. Um, people wonder why uh, things get rebooted. Some people want to know why they um, why they need to be rebooted. A, a good example of reboots that you know some people felt don't need to be done are uh, basically stuff that's happening right now as we speak. Uh, for example, the Amazing Spider-Man is coming out next month, next year. Amazing Spider-Man. This is a reboot of the recent trilogy franchise of the movies that came out from 2002 to 2006. Now, some people feel as though it's not really necessary. Some feel the other way around. Some feel that this is the direction it should have went in in the first place. And some feel that the trilogy, the original trilogy, is fine the way it is. Some say that the positive about it is we're going to finally see the lizard. Doc Carner is an evil alter ego. Well, others feel as though we don't need to see it, and everything was just fine the way it is. Everything came full circle that way. The, the truth is, folks, I, I don't really know what to say about it. I mean, it looks good. I mean, the trailer... From what I saw, it looks good. So, you know, I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance. You know, I, I've seen a lot of reboots of a lot of things throughout my 32 years, if you will. Um, as, as You know, as a kid, as a teenager, and as an adult. So, I can understand where they're coming from. I mean, you got to realize, sometimes when a reboot occurs, it's basically to reboot for a new generation. Um, you take a look at some of the cartoons that I grew up on in the 80s, like Transformers and G.I. Joe and My Little Pony, all have been rebooted several times for new generations. Jem is the only one that has not yet gotten that yet, but I cannot rule her out as a possible reboot in the near future, because we still might get it. I mean, let's talk right now that Jem may be heading to the big screen thanks to Universal. Um... The thing is, I know some people have the differences about reboots. Um, you know, some say that if it's done properly, you know, it's going to attract not just the original fans, but it's going to attract the newer fans. And a good example of this is uh, Scooby-Doo. You know, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, if you will. Uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated... I'm pretty sure a lot of people have had mixed reactions about it, and the thing is, by having mixed reactions, some have felt that it's either a good thing, and some have felt that it's a bad thing. You know, people, you know, the people that feel it's a good thing, whether they're both new fans and the older fans, the reason they, the reason those that would look at it as a good thing is because not only does it stay not only does it stay true to the original format and almost to the original character designs, but it also adds in refreshing new elements that were hinted at at times but never really explored in the original form in the original broadcast. I mean we get to actually see the parents of Mystery Inc. involved in this in, in, in this revival, in this reboot. And it gives them what many have considered more of a realism and a more of a dramatic feel. And the reason they say that is because you get to see it from a, if you're if you're if you're watching it, you see it from the kids' perspective, from Mystery Inc.'s perspective, as well as the parents' perspective. From the parents' perspective, you would understand, hey, they don't want their kids doing this because a they feel it's too dangerous. They shouldn't be sticking it. A, that it's too dangerous and they shouldn't be sticking the nose where it doesn't belong. And two, just like the mayor and the sheriff, they don't want to lose the only thing that makes their town 
a hot tourist attraction, and that's the mysterious elements of it. Now, that's one of the things people say is, is the good part about the Mystery Inc. deal. One of the good parts. Or it's one of the new refreshing ideas that actually works well with the original format. The, the other ideas that they like is the fact that it's more of a serial, kind of a chapter book-like format as well. See, many people have said that in the originals, in the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You and Scooby-Doo Show and even new Scooby-Doo movies and Scooby-Doo Mysteries that there was never really any continuity. This has a solid continuity. It's like basically reading a teenage novel. Because, because every episode is introduced as a chapter. So like it's like what? Like a chapter. So it's like every episode is like reading five pages of one chapter. That's one of the things they like about it. One of the things that they like about it. The other thing they like about it, like I said, is some of the stuff that they explore, some of the areas they explore other than just, you know, you know, introducing the parents, getting the parents more involved, making it more darker in tone, a little bit more dramatic, you know, the chapter format, serial format, if you will. The other thing they like is the fact that they explore the relationships of the characters, and they, and that helps make it more dramatic and and if not at times a little humorous, but makes it more dramatic and realistic. Uh, for example, and I mentioned this in my review about the show, Shaggy, his the way they make him real is that he's in a relationship with Velma, but Velma basically later on gives him the ultimatum: Hey, is it going to be me? Or is it going to be Scooby? And then you get this other guy, this mysterious Mr. E, who's supposedly, I guess, helping them in some way, telling her, don't give up on Shaggy. You know, he may go this way, but there's still part of him that probably cares about you. And then you have Fred and Daphne's relationship explored, and it goes to that next level to the point that they're secretly engaged, and nobody knows about it until the final episode. It's kind of like with Shaggy and Velma's relationship. Nobody knew until a certain episode. And what's even be and what's even cool about this as well that a lot of fans, a lot of the original fans, like about it, that I guess attracted to them to it. Those that actually find it good. The other format that they, the other refreshing idea that they added in to mix with the original format, was the background on the fact that there was a Mystery Inc. before Mystery Inc. So, it all depends to me on, the re on what original and refreshing ideas work with the original format that you're still using for the reboot. That's how I look at it. That's how a lot of people look at it. Look at it with the, an older, either from the older generation or the newer generation. That's how they look at it. You know, the same goes for TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When 2003, in 2003 when they did that reboot, they, it was a reboot based mainly on the original ideas, but when you take everything going forward from the stories to the fast forward spinoff to Back to the Sewers and all that, as well as the Turtles Forever movie, it all comes full circle and you realize that this revival, this reboot of Ninja Turtles is basically based in a different dimension, a different world. Well, just a different world, which confirms it in Turtles Forever because then you find out that the 87 to 96 cartoon was from a different world, the Archie comics of Turtles was from a different world, the live action movies, the live action show, the anime, all from different worlds and dimensions. And what's funny about that is when I saw this, to me it's like it all comes full circle because you realize they do acknowledge all the other uh, franchise spin-offs of the of the uh, of the franchise, all the other media outlets of the franchise, but they do it in a way that the reboot they do it in a way that this a reboot not only makes it come full circle but makes you realize that this reboot is just based as another version of Ninja Turtles, possibly in another dimension. And 
what's funny about that is I looked at that and I thought to myself, you know, that's similar to what they did inside Big Jog, the comic book by Archie Comics. They have this knowledge that there's a lot of other different Sonic worlds. Like Sonic Underground is a different dimension of Sonic. Um, Sonic X is a different dimension of Sonic. Sonic Sat AM, same thing. So basically, you would be looking at maybe the Archie comic world, if not the game world, or mainly probably the game world, or even the Sat AM world, depending on how you look at it, as the prime world where everyone else is just a, another world. And basically, according to the comic, what you're reading is the prime world, so everything else is just like a spin off, a different uh, version of that world. And that's what the TMNT thing did. Even, from 2003 to about 2009, everything just came full circle with that reboot by acknowledging everything else and saying, all these other things you've read, all these other movies you've seen in theaters, all these other shows you've watched, including the 80s version of Turtles, all are different worlds, are all based in different dimensions and worlds. Which is kind of cool, because like I said, it allows it to come full circle. You know, but again, that shows you how good a reboot can be, how good a reboot can be to the point that it, it, it is positively accepted by people, by fans of the older generation and the newer generation. But then again, you got reboots that are made and people don't like them. Like, let's take a look at the Smurfs. The Smurfs were brought back and brought to the forefront in the theaters this past year in sort of a bit of a reboot, if you will. Nobody liked it. It was a hit at first, but nobody really liked it. Yogi Bear, same thing. He was rebooted into a live-action film. Nobody liked it, but it still proved to be a success with some people, and financially, and it's getting a sequel. Same with Alvin and the Chipmunks. First one was a success, proved positive with a lot of people. Went back to its roots, sort of. Second one stayed that way, but added the Chibets. And now you got the third one. It all depends on how you look at it. Some may like it, some may not. Financially, it also depends on the finances, if financially it will work. See, you see, a reboot all depends on who's behind it, whose idea, it's, whose idea it is, who's behind it, and how is it going to work. Some people, even if it's a soft reboot, some people will like it, some people won't. The Genesis story arc in Psych the Hitchhiker Biology Comics is a prime example. People, some people liked it, some people didn't. Some people like the direction it's going with a certain character turning into a robot, if temporarily. Some people don't like it. In fact, I had one person at theguywiththeglasses.com asking the question, did DC or Marvel take over Archie and nobody was told? You know, that's how people react to something like that, because sometimes a reboot is positive and sometimes it's not. But again, it all depends on who's, it all depends on who's at the helm, who's in charge, and who's going to take responsibility when it's all said and done. We say it's, overall gotten a positive reaction or a negative. That's all. So that's just my take on what a reboot is and how it's accepted either it's positively or negatively accepted. So if you want to comment down below let me know. Com leave your comments down below if you want to. Do a video response if you like and I will talk to you all later.